Now, when he talks about the coming of the Lord, he's not talking about a single point-in-time event. It really pictures a multi-stage event that was tied into the way that royalty would visit, and it's a fascinating concept. You and I live in the, what we call the church age. Right? Since Jesus died and rose again, we're, we're part of the church, we're living in the church age. The church age is going to come to a close. And it's going to come to a close when Jesus comes in this event that we'll talk about in a few minutes called the rapture, when Jesus comes, comes for his church. And then that will be followed by a period of time called the tribulation. And believers, uh, the believers that are here now, the church will not be here. There'll be people coming to know Christ, but it's going it, to be a different animal than what it looks like today. Still saved by grace and all that. At the end of that is when Jesus comes back to complete his second coming, and it will be glorious. He'll land on the earth. He'll set up what we call his millennial kingdom. The scriptures uh, call it, if you read the, uh, the book of Revelation, he talks about the thousand years where Jesus will reign from Jerusalem, actually be physically uh, present on the earth and reigning there. And then at the end of that thousand years is one final event that's called the Great White Throne Judgment. And uh, things will really change. The way we experience time will even change. We'll, we'll go into what is called the eternal state. But now let's process this big idea in light of the people who have died. Because now we need to talk about the resurrection of the dead. And Paul, of course, talks about it in this passage in 1 Thessalonians 4 that we just read before. So you're going to have, when you die, if you were to die today, for example, as a believer, right, you'll have some kind of transitional form. Even if you're an unbeliever, you'll have a transitional form that you exist in. But you will not yet have a resurrection body if you were, are to die today. Now, when he does come back, though, when Christ returns, like I said a moment ago, you'll have a body very similar to his in terms of its characteristics. And in 1 Corinthians 15, 52, he indicates that in the flash, in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, when Jesus comes, he's going to, uh, he's going to bring along with him, uh, you know, in, the, in that rapturous moment, right? He's going to bring along with him you in that transitional form, your soul, spirit, whatever it looks like at that point. And he's going to like zip you into a brand new body. And you will rise, not like a zombie, but you'll have a, an immortal, superior, physical body just like Jesus has. But now what about us if we're still alive? This is where we need to talk about the rapture of believers. Look at verse 17 and notice what he says that. He says, he says, after that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. That term, caught up, is from the Greek word in, in the New Testament, harpazo. And it refers to a sudden snatching away. So if you know Jesus, you are his, and someday he will fully claim you as his own. And, you know, sometimes we say, well, I can't wait to get to heaven. Believe it or not, he can't wait to get you there. That's why Paul closes this little teaching section in verse 18 saying, therefore, encourage one another with these words. Paul wrote this to offer comfort because the return of Jesus for us, is imminent, and believer, you may never physically die.